everybody, my name is Chef Kalika Simmons and I'm here with Chef Gary Hild and we are Young Women on the Move and this is Cooking Class in a Box. We are all so excited to be with you and this today, you guys are all going to learn how to make a delicious, heart healthy, but again, delicious and crunchy chicken tender plate. Bread it with coconut and make your own honey mustard. What? Did you know you could do that? Well, you totally can, so stay tuned. Everybody's just about here, so I'm going to do a quick introduction of myself. I am Chef Kalika. I will be your uh, baking and pastry instructor. And back here, this young man is uh, Chef Gary, and he's going to be your savory instructor. What is savory? Everything that's not anything sweet. He's going to teach you how to make uh, all these delicious meats and proteins, how to cook healthily. And today, he's going to show you how to make an incredible coconut chicken tenders recipe. So I just want everyone to sit back, relax, just so you know you're all going to be getting all of your supplies, equipment, and food should be tomorrow, should be. Don't hold me to that, but fingers crossed on that. But without further ado, Chef Gary, please take it away. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Young Women on the Move's Commercial Kitchen. My name is Gary Hill. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. And with everyone's wonderful attention today, we are gonna to present to you coconut chicken tenderloins that you can prepare for lunch or dinner but just a reminder as to what Kalika had to say was tomorrow you can expect you can expect this beautiful set of kitchen equipment delivered to your home along with all of the ingredients that you will need to prepare the coconut chicken tenderloin. So please be home. 10 a.m. is when the delivery starts. Okay, and I will be putting that together all myself. So thank you so much. Um, I'm sure everyone's aware of the, the sanitation that has to happen in every kitchen. And today is no different. We have to have what? Yeah, you got it. Clean hands. Okay? So I'm going to wash my hands. And yeah, just a little bit of dish soap. Okay? Works absolutely great. Hate to put my back to you, but that's just exactly the way it is. So if you can sing even part of the happy birthday... To make sure that your hands are super clean, okay, it takes about 20 seconds for soap to really do its work. Paper towel, and we're off and running. So, we're going to work with raw chicken. If you're going to work with raw chicken in your house, please wash it okay so i've got the 12 chicken tenderloins that are set aside for the recipe i have a, a strainer and i'm going to put them in there like that my hands are dry now and if you have at home some sort of glove, please put them on. Okay? I will send gloves with your trays tomorrow so that you know exactly what I'm talking about when you see this video again or if you want to review it or however that will, will work for you. But I have to turn my back. Okay? Ice cold water. And have that water drain off really good, okay? No matter what the chicken that came from the store, we want to wash it. Put it on our tray. Let's dry these off. If I may, while Chef Gary is doing that, 
I will encourage everyone who is curious as to why you should wash your chicken before you use it, I invite you to Google it. It's a good idea to flex those research muscles, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Chef Kalika is absolutely right. Google is your best friend when it comes to preparing food sometimes, because if you don't know something, they usually do. So we're going to lay these out in like that. And you can keep these gloves on. You can wipe them with a, with a paper towel. Um, but as it says in your recipe, we need salt and pepper on each one of these. And it takes a half a teaspoon of each. But what you can do is just take, merely take your pepper shaker from home. And that way you can visually see that you have black pepper on each one and salt on each one. You can visually see it is what I'm saying. Is everybody with me? I would ask for a yes chef, but... Um, yes chef! Okay, and a yes chef came, didn't it? Yes chef! All right. Heard chef! So, salt and pepper on this. So we're going to start with this half a cup of flour that's, that's going to be on here. We already have our, everything seasoned. This is called mise en place. It means things in place. Yes. We're going to go with the other dry ingredient, which is coconut. And this is unsweetened coconut. So I'm going to show everybody the bag. Bought it at hy V. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, is that close enough? Okay. And... Don't buy coconut that is sweet. We want to buy coconut that is unsweetened. Okay? No extra sugar today. Sorry. <laughs> All right? So, this has been packed in here. Okay? This is one full cup of the coconut. It goes on this plate here. And measuring spoons. Measuring spoons are going to be in your kit. Okay, so there's no reason why you can't measure every ingredient that I've demonstrated to you today. So, you're going to get smoked paprika, yes. Smoked paprika, delicious stuff, okay. And we're going to put one half teaspoon on top like that. And we're going to have granulated garlic and or garlic powder. Everybody see? And we're going to have a half a teaspoon of that. Everybody understand me? Yes, chef. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So let's take... All right, the chicken is going to come through this anyway, so we can still keep our... So we want this to look slightly orangish and or um, from that paprika and garlic. As the chicken passes through, we're going to put it on this pan... If you've got Pam at home, always have Pam in your kitchen. She's always great to have around. Give this pan a spray. And that's done that. We need eggs. Okay. So, I would advise that you use two hands to break your eggs. Rather than one, just a crack on the side. Just like that. Side again. Chef, do you don't mind? We chef. Okay. And we have that there. This is a damp towel that I have back here, and I can wipe my, even my gloved hands off just slightly. Here I am again with the three eggs in this bowl, and we're going to whisk these up. Chef Gary, I don't know if anybody heard, did you season those eggs? No, the seasoning is not in the eggs, it's on the chicken and it's in the coconut. Thank you. Okay. So along with that, we need a couple tablespoons of water. And what this does is it helps 
One, two, three. What this does, this makes this egg mixture liquid, okay? Back in the sink, grab this bowl, and I put this bowl here as just as I my reminder. But now we have our three stage um, breading station set up. We have dried, chi dried chicken that's been seasoned with salt and pepper. We have a half a cup of all-purpose flour. We have three eggs with a little bit of water whisked to liquid. We have one cup of coconut. And the coconut has been seasoned with garlic and smoked paprika. So here we go. Try to keep, we'll do, keep this, this hand just into the dry. As you can see, we're just dipping these. We're gonna do four at a time. Okay, is everybody with me? Okay, so here we go. Now I'll take this hand And it goes. And I'm just going to do two. And then just sprinkle that coconut on top like that. And then this goes to the pan that has been sprayed. Is everybody with me on that? Okay. Two more. This can be made with not just chicken tenderloins, but if you want to make just regular chicken breast, you can, you're can. you certainly welcome to do that, and you can cut the chicken up into strips. Or if you find a chicken breast that is smaller, that would work better for you with this, you are welcome to use that chicken also. This does not work for fish, nor does it work that well for pork or things like that, but this ch particular chicken, it absolutely works well for. So we got three more. Use your right hand. Put that in there like that. And again, uh, going back to the, to the healthy part of the recipe, this is, this is a recipe that is not fried. It is merely baked in the oven. It's made with fresh chicken tenderloins that have not been processed or breaded or anything like that has happened to it. This is the real deal. Chef Kalika, if you would like to show the, uh, the group the, the chicken in the package, it's in that, that's in that. Yes, Chef, I'd love to. Right, right there. there. We chef. Fun fact about yep. a lot of folks in culinary school, we all learn a little bit of French. C'est poulet. Chicken. Why is that? Well, let me tell you. If we are classically trained, then that means we are of the school of thought of the French. And of course, this is because most of the great chefs that have written everything down, that have documented everything, are in fact French. Escoffier, uh, Gustreme, uh, Chantilly, things like that. So if you do end up going to culinary school, you will learn a little bit of French. But these right here, these are from Heidi. They're chicken breast tenders. That is a muscle that is actually behind the breast on a chicken. So when you debone a chicken, and you take the breast off, there's a little tender meat placed there, and it's tender because it's, it's a muscle, but it's not really a muscle that works too hard. So you don't have to spend a lot of time cooking it down or braising it, and that's why it's such a lovely little thing to work with. But you will be receiving this as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Chef. Okay, so I've got three here, and I have three more left to go. Yes, we don't want to just dump this all on one plate and we don't want to um, dump it all in here or all in here. It's really beneficial to do this one by one so that they're completely coated, okay, so that when, th when you eat this, 
the flavor in your mouth is going to be, you're going to have great mouthfeel because you're going to have crispy coconut, okay? The flavor of um, the paprika and different things like that. Do you so, work on that, Chef? Well, I had a little bit more, but... That's okay. I can... I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna be okay. You think you're gonna be okay? Yep. Okay. So we're gonna put these last two in there. Okay. And it's also a good idea because consistency, because consistency is something that's kinda hard to do and better to just make sure every bite is consistent and that's the real mark of a good cook. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Yeah. Fantastic. We all agree it's gonna be consistent, don't we? So yeah, it's consistency in absolutely everything. So um, yeah, would you open that coconut, please? And then we'll just sprinkle up just a little bit on there. Uh, beautiful. Thank you so much. That's all I need. All right. Beautiful. We're just going to have just a we ran, And this can happen to you at your kitchen. I mean, you might not have just exactly what you may need um, from that. So, But I'll make that adjustment on the recipe since we noted that. And... But there's also a good reason to have to cook with somebody else, right? It is. You it's a cook. communal thing. Cook with your mom and dad, cook with your brothers and sisters. Okay, gloves can come off mm -hmm. at this time. And this plate can go in the sink. And what should we do when we take our gloves off, Chef? And when we take our gloves off, we want to put them in the trash. Yes. Take off your gloves is wash your hands. You have bacteria that grows inside of that glove, believe it or not, even in this little bit of time. How many times do you think the average cook or chef washes their hands in a shift in the kitchen? Oh my gosh. The, uh, that's a great question, chef, because you will probably wash your hands literally every 5 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Every 5 to 15 minutes. So have plenty of soap, have plenty of towels, have all this stuff re ready to go so that you have you're ready. Oven has been preheated to 350 degrees. These are all ready to go, okay? And in the oven they are. Done. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare the honey mustard sauce. So, we have apple cider vinegar uh, right here, and we're going to put three tablespoons. You have three tablespoons into this bowl. One, two, three. Really quick, Chef, the video cut out for just a sec, so I just want to make sure everyone heard. We have stuck those in the oven at 350 degrees at a preheated oven. Hi. Oven with, okay, thank All you right. so much. No worries. Appreciate it. I'm trying to be the Avery person here. <laughs> Okay. okay, one third cup, good Dijon mustard. And I encourage everyone, buy the squeeze bottle because you can squirt that into the bot right here. Give it a tap so that you know you're exactly on time. Okay, put this back to the side, take a spoon. But by all means, I can't stress enough to measure everything. Measure everything. I know I said that the sprinkle of salt and pepper, that that's a visual thing that you can look at, but it will come out just about to the point of the half teaspoon of each. Let's put these back. And rinse off my spoon. So we have mustard, vinegar. What's next? Quarter cup of Mr. Honey Bear, right? So in it goes. Because honey mustard is not just a trendy name. There's honey and there's mustard in there. Right. But the good thing about this honey mustard is this. This is made from scratch. This is homemade by you for your family. The great part about this, nothing in this is processed, okay? The ingredients are, this is all natural mustard. This is fresh mayonnaise that, that a great grocery store made. 
This is honey, and you can buy honey from a local honey pr producer um, that it could be just as good. So in goes the, comp the honey. And what's even better about making stuff by yourself, there's no extra preservatives in there. And that's what's really bad Absolutely. for you, isn't that right? Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. So one thing you can always do is I took a, there's a seal inside of every jar. Make sure that you've got all that out of there. You know, take this off, take off the little um, sealer, put it to the side. Same with this. You know, as you can see, I had my eggs out. I had flour out if I needed a little bit extra. So now we're asking for a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise. And again, level full, as you can see, and then into the mixture. Cover back on. Well, that's in there, I'm just gonna get this I'm sure everyone's heard of clean as you go. And you should clean as you go everywhere just to make sure that you didn't get this spilled into anything, anything like that. This can all go in the sink and be washed down. Rinse out your rag. Wash this out. All right. Now, we are going to have a little bit of, I should have a dip, there it is. This recipe for the dipping sauce does call for a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. So we're going to just measure that out. Goes in like that. Black pepper, okay, just like you'd see it in the store. Take the cover off. Goes in like that. Put your cover back on again. Whisk and or whip, French whip, piano whip, different terminologies for this, but it's meant to stir. Uh, I work for one chef, you could only stir clockwise, okay? <laughs> Believe it or not. Everybody has, their, everybody has their guidance that they like to give, and that was his. So, this is a dipping sauce that is not thick. It is sweet and sour and whisk this until you see no more white flecks of mayonnaise coming up like that. Chef Gary, can I just point out for everyone who's listening, watch how he is stirring. He's not moving his wrist. His wrist is staying stiff, but his arm is moving. That's how you whip things for a really long time without getting injured or tired. That's something that that's something that uh, they don't teach in culinary school always. And the strength comes all the way from here to here to here, just as Chef Kalika said. Because we're working smart, we're not working hard. Isn't that right? That's exactly right. Work right. smart. Whisk those back to the sink. We have, um, and what we can do, what you can do right now is get a cup. Grab a ladle, and so we'll just make two of these, and then they can be all ready to go for when the chicken comes out of the oven. So Chef Kalika will agree with this, that we want to 
taste everything before it leaves the kitchen. I will. So, honey, mustard, vinegar. Gets a tang in the back of your throat, okay? Absolutely gonna be perfect mixed with our chicken tender. Okay, through, as they say on television, through the magic of television, okay, um, we have, we prepared some chicken tenderloins already, and here they are, okay? So don't they look pretty? They, they do, yes, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So let's move these out of here. Well, Chef, you got that crunchy skin without a deep fryer, didn't you? Yes, so we have a nice crunch going on with this. And because we all agree that the crunchy part is the best part of the chicken tender, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah, all right. So, um, here's our plate. Here's our sauce. I'm ready to go with that. We're being careful at this point because that that just came out of the oven. It did. So everybody make sure please be safe. So this is hot, okay? But I mean, you can let, it will not stick to the pan. You won't have any issues as long as you spray the pan with the pan spray that I noted earlier. So three of these are a good portion. Okay, that's why I gave you 12 so that you could feed a family of four. Each one gets three. Okay, so there's one, two, three like that. And there is our finished product. Thank you so much for paying attention today. Uh, as you can see, it's a very easy recipe. Everyone, make it for your family. Make it with lots of love. And it's going to be a fantastic dinner. This can be served with, yes, salad, green vegetable, maybe some steamed rice. Um, I mean, even good mashed potatoes could be fantastic with this. Um, but make that great dipping sauce. Keep this in the refrigerator. Um, this stuff is, you can dip fresh vegetables in it. Uh, there's just a numerous amount of um, opportunities for this dipping sauce. And as I said, chicken tenders don't have to be the choice. You can just cut small pieces of chicken, put it through the breading, and bake it in the oven until the 20 minutes, it should take a full 20 minutes so that you know that you have the internal temperature of, and if you have a thermometer at home, by all means, use one. If you don't, the product is gonna feel very firm. The full 20 minutes is what should happen. We did not send a thermometer with, but I'm just encouraging that 165 degrees is um, the temperature that we need to wear. And we are at 166. So, everybody have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodness, how much fun was that? I hope you all learned a lot. Make sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe button, stay with us all the time. And don't forget, you can watch this video as many times as you like. You have our contact info. And don't forget to please, please, please take pictures of your food and send it to Young Women on the Move on Instagram. Let us see your progress. See you next week.